Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's the Max Name. Coach you guys with a brand new video. And today, I wanted to, I don't want to be late on it, but I wanted to discuss the potential, the proposed changes to the draft that have come out in recent days, that being the decentralization of it. So, if you guys don't know, Elliot Friedman tweeted this out uh, on October 18th, so like two days ago. Uh, the NHL officially notified teams it would like to hear their opinions on decentralization of the draft, having clubs stay at home, all, attend all prospects attend, like the NFL and the NBA, stuff like that. If there is desire for changes, would most likely be in 2025, outside chance for 2024. So if you guys don't know, uh, the decentral the, a decentralized draft is essentially, like if you, I'm sure if you guys watch this channel, you know about the NFL and the NBA drafts. Where basically the team stays at their home base, so you know Detroit, like Steve Eiserman would stay at LCA or wherever, uh, Montreal would stay where they are, Edmonton where they are, Toronto where they are, Dallas where you know they stay at home base essentially, while the prospects and fans attend the draft. And the way the NFL and the NBA does it, they have the commissioner read it. I don't think anybody wants to see Gary Bettman read off the names, so. We'll, they'll, they'll have to figure that out because having Gary Bettman read the names of, like, let's say the off chance to do for 2024, having Gary Bettman come up and say so-and-so draft with the first overall draft pick selects Macklin Celebrini, I don't think anybody wants to hear that. So they'll have to figure that out. But personally, it's I'm a bit 50-50 on it because on one, on one hand – I really in I, I like that they have the GMs of the team coming up to make the pick. It makes it more personal to me, you know. Instead of having the commissioner say them, and then it just kind of feels like this whole corporate style. You know, you're here for the N, you're here for the NFL and not the team. You know, when the GM says it, it seems more like you're being picked by the team for the team and not by the league for the league. Stuff like that. So. I like it on that hand, but on the other hand, if you watch the NFL and the NBA, they do fantastically with this. Like, yes, I don't like the commissioners reading the draft picks, but the way they do it, it's very fan-involved. And I listened to the latest episode of the Windmill podcast, by the way, which was uploaded, posted today, last night, technically, I think. It was like 4 in the morning or some shit. I only know that because I posted that stupid video that is up on the channel right now. I, like I said, I, they do it great with the fan experience, and I think... The, NF, the NFL, the NHL could do that really well. You know, they could have a section for each team. And then whenever your team has their pick, you shuffle those fans out. You know, you shuffle them to a certain part where each prospect that gets drafted by that team can interact with the fans and stuff like that. I think that would be dope. And there is, it, 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 like I said, the NFL, I don't know if the NFL and the NBA really do that. Uh, I think the, I think they do. I don't know. I don't really care for either league. I mean, the NFL, yes, because the Lions are doing really good. But the NBA, I don't really care about in general, even if the Pistons were fantastic. It is an interesting concept because it's different. Because up to this point, I think the NHL is really the only league that doesn't have the commissioner read their their draft and their draft pick and i think the way to get around having the commissioner do that is like on the wing world podcast i think that each team should pick a representative you know it could be i mean it could be the gm you know the, for detroit because it's the detroit red wings channel primarily uh let's just say it could be steve eisman but if steve eisman didn't want to do it or couldn't do it because he was making the picks so we likely wouldn't be you could send i don't know say nicholas cronwell up there or, hell, send Chris Osgood up there. Or, you know what would be great? If you put Mickey Redman up there. That I think that'd be fantastic. But, you know, you could pick somebody who has root. It doesn't even have to be, like, NHL related. You could send Jason McCrimmon, you know, the guy who won the Willie O'Ree Community Hero Award this year up there. I think that would be dope for Detroit. Uh, you know, you could send local people who are big in the community to go up there and do it. So you could get around it like that, and I think that would be fantastic, especially if you have someone like Jason McCrimmon go up there and do that. It brings more of a feel of community to it instead of having the commissioner or even the GM, you know? Because like I said, if the commissioner, when the commissioner calls your name or your prospect up, 
you know, you drafted them, it feels like you're being drafted to the league. If the GM does feel like you're being drafted to the team, but if somebody from the community does it, like Jason, it feels like you're being drafted to the community. And I feel like that is a fantastic way to get prospects invested in trying to make that team and being able to make that team. So I think that's a fantastic idea. And I think that's really the only po- those are the only possible ways you can get the decentralization of the NHL draft to work. Because up until then, because you know, up until this point, De- Detroit has been the most intuitive, I guess. I, I can't say, oh, I said Detroit. The NHL hasn't been the most fan friendly for drafts. You know, yeah, you've got your you've got people there to watch the draft and stuff like that. But you've got the whole thing, like you've got pretty much the entirety of the main floor covered in tables for your for the teams. You know, the, the you got Detroit has a table. Ottawa has a table, Dallas has a table, Anaheim has a table. You know, you've got a whole part where it could be used. You put your prospects where the tables are, where, you know, normally the, you know, draft teams would be. Then you put your fans up in the stands wherever they may be. And then you move the fucking press stuff backstage. You don't have to have that on the floor. So there is ways that this could work. And I genuinely believe that if they would do it, though, that's the only way they can do it. Because, like I've said, like, four times, nobody, nobody wants to see Gary Bettman get up and announce their prospect. You know, nobody wants to see Gary Bettman get up there and announce, with the first overall pick of the 2024 draft, San Jose Sharks select Max, you know, Zillabrini. They don't want to see that. So, it's, like, can you imagine if in the 2019 draft, Detroit went up there and it was, Detroit drafted, and... all you see is Gary Bettman go up and you hear with the fourth overall pick of the 2019 draft, the Detroit Red Wings select Maurice Sider or something like that. It just wouldn't sound right. So it's whatever realistically, whether they go one way or another, but if they do the de- if they do do the decentralization of the draft, that's really the only way I could see it working. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I really want to hear your guys' opinions on this because there are a lot of opinions on it and Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is, as always, the Mexanadian, and I will talk to you guys later. Adios.